Today we have two stories that demonstrate Don Bosco's discernment of spirits, that is, his ability to read a soul in order to do good. In the confessional, when God permitted, he knew exactly what to say and how to act in order to convert hardened sinners. He would even have premonitions of what was going to happen to people and would accordingly advise them on future events in their life. One of the stories will definitely convince you to never embark upon a long journey without first saying your prayers for the trip. Seatbelts are one thing, but having the protection of God is far more important, as we shall soon see. You're watching The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. We begin our narrative before Don Bosco founded the oratory, when he was newly ordained, studying moral theology at a sort of finishing school for young priests called the Convito Ecclesiastic in Turin, Italy. In 1844, at just 29 years of age, he had already developed an affable personality with a rich interior life that made him a favorite in the confessional. People would tell him things that they wouldn't tell any other human being on earth which is illustrated by this remarkable story. He had learned that a friend of very advanced age was sick, and led by some heavenly inspiration, hastened to visit the man. That gentleman had spent 80 years in the service of God and doing works of charity, so everyone assumed that he was a saint. He had known Don Bosco as a student and was very fond of him. Arriving at his home, Don Bosco was worried to learn from family members that he was declining and had therefore received all the sacraments of the dying and the papal blessing. Don Bosco asked to see him, but they said the doctor had forbidden any visits. He insisted, but they said the sick man was unconscious and it would be useless to approach him. However, Don Bosco could not resign himself, impelled no doubt by an initiative that came straight from God. He told the family about their old friendship and was so insistent that they finally let him in and left him alone with his friend. Don Bosco approached the bed and called the dying man by name. At the sound of his voice, as if by magic, the dying man trembled, came to his senses, and miraculously opened his eyes. Oh, it's you, Bosco, he said. I heard of your illness as I was passing through town, the saint said. I couldn't fail to pay you a visit. Thank you, thank you. And how are you doing? Bad, very bad. They told me that you've already received the sacraments. Yes, I have. But as he said these words, his voice trembled and his face revealed a profound disturbance. So let us give thanks to God, Don Bosco said. Be at peace, for your soul is ready to pass on to eternity. After a life fully spent for the glory of God and the good of others, you can be content. The poor old man sighed with a deep breath that seemed like a groan. He looked around and said, Bosco? Yes? Is there anyone in the room? No one. We're alone. So Don Bosco thought, but that was not the case. A person who did not want to be seen stood behind a curtain and did not move. The old man continued, Tell me. Have you taken the confession exam and got the necessary faculties? Yes, I have, but at such time, any priest can absolve, even if he did not. Ah, oh, Bosco, I have something to confide to you. Have pity and forgive my weakness. Do not blame me. I must tell you a secret. Go ahead and speak. You know how much I care for you. Well, when I was young, I had the misfortune to fall into mortal sin. I felt so ashamed that I never dared to confess it. All my communions, even my first one, were sacrilegious. I feared to lose my confessor's esteem. And now, in your last confession, have you revealed everything? asked Don Bosco. No, I haven't. Help me. Yes, gladly. Have full confidence in the Lord who is so good and died for you. The old man confessed with the most profound sorrow, and Don Bosco absolved him. As soon as he received absolution, he raised his eyes to heaven and lifted his arms, exclaiming, 
blessed be forever the infinite mercy of God. Then his arms fell back on the bed and he expired. As you can see, God was working miracles through Don Bosco, especially in the sacrament of confession, which brings us to our second confession story. On August 31st, 1844, a wealthy lady, the wife of the ambassador of Portugal, was about to travel from Turin to the city of Chieti to settle some affairs. Being a fervent Catholic, she wished first to settle the affairs of her soul. In the morning, she entered the church of St. Francis of Assisi. She had never met Don Bosco, nor could he know anything about her, especially as she dressed very simply. Her ordinary confessor wasn't there. She saw a young priest kneeling down and praying near the confessional with a very collected and devout air. She felt inclined to confess to him. Don Bosco heard her confession and gave her a penance to give small alms that day. Father, I cannot do it, she replied. Why not, being such a wealthy lady, asked Don Bosco. She was stunned that Don Bosco knew her social position even though she had never met him. She replied, Father, I cannot do this penance because I have to leave Turin today. Well then, said Don Bosco, pray three times the Angela Day to your guardian angel to assist you and preserve you from all evil so that you won't be frightened by what will happen to you today. Even more impressed, the lady gladly accepted the suggestion and recited the guardian angel prayer with her servants, invoking his protection for a safe trip. She got into the carriage with her daughter and a maid, and after a long stretch of road traveling at top speed, the horses were startled and ran out of control. In vain did the coachman tighten the reins. The horses no longer felt the bite of the bridle. As the lady sent up ear-piercing shrieks, the carriage door opened and its wheels hit a pile of gravel. It overturned with the passengers inside and shattered the open door. The coachman was jolted out of the box, and the women were in the gravest danger of being crushed. The lady scraped her head and hands on the ground as the horses galloped wildly. All this happened in a flash. The lady placed her confidence in her guardian angel and cried out the angel of God prayer at the top of her voice in Latin. Angela Dei, qui custis es me, metibi commissium pietatis superna, illumina custodi regiet guberna, amen. That was enough to save them. Suddenly, the frantic horses calmed down and stopped. The coachman got up unharmed and joined them as people rushed to lift them off the ground. Inexplicably, the lady came out of the carriage with her daughter calmly and without a shadow of fright. Both brushed themselves off and looked at each other with an air of astonishment, seeing that neither had suffered the slightest harm. They started shouting, thanks be to God and the guardian angel who saved us. The lady and her entourage continued on their way. The coachman raised the carriage and felt strong enough to walk a few hours to his home in Chieti. One can imagine how highly the lady thought of that young priest who so fittingly advised her to recommend herself to her guardian angel. She couldn't wait to return soon to Turin and find out who he was. She went to St. Francis of Assisi's and inquired in the sacristy who might have been the young priest who heard her confession. Learning that it was Father John Bosco, she thanked him for his saving advice and became his admirer and promoter. For his part, Don Bosco asked her to help Father Carlo Palazzolo, who was in dire straits and wanted to devote himself entirely to a ministry more suited to his mature age she became a zealous benefactor of the oratory. All the above circumstances were recounted to us in writing by that same good lady, Mrs. Teresa Martano of Chieri, her maid, and Don Michele Rua. This event in St. John Bosco's life helps us to understand the serious need for prayer and devotion to our holy guardian angels, so frequently forgotten in the rush of our daily lives. I pray that you receive the grace to become more devoted to the angels in imitation of this great saint's life. If you'd like to hear about Don Bosco's unwavering trust in divine providence, please click on the video above me here. Thank you all so much for watching, and Godspeed.